Hello, and welcome to the 43rd Annual Metropolitan Science and Engineering Fair Award Ceremony. My name is Dan Sitzman, MSCF President. This past year provided more challenges to teachers, student researchers, mentors, and the MSCF planning team, resulting in another year of virtual science fair and award ceremony. Despite the many difficulties encountered in this program, we will celebrate the success of student STEM research in our three county area. MSCF was founded in 1980 by Creighton Prep science teacher, David Dow. For the past 42 years, students from public, private, and home schools in Douglas, Sarpy, and Washington counties have had the opportunity to showcase their own research from STEM disciplines. To begin this year's program, I am honored to introduce Joanne Lee, Chancellor of the University of Nebraska, Omaha. Greetings, scientists. I'm Joanne Lee, Chancellor at the University of Nebraska at Omaha, and I'm so happy to welcome you to the 2022 Metropolitan Science and Engineering Fair Awards Ceremony. The Metropolitan Science and Engineering Fair is a long-standing Omaha tradition and a great opportunity for young scientists to pursue their curiosity and make discoveries about their world. Scientific curiosity and the push to discover are vital parts of our Maverick mission at UNO. And I'm so proud and excited to be a part of the Omaha Metro Area's 42nd Science and Engineering Fair. STEM disciplines remain a top priority for the University of Nebraska at Omaha and across our state. Nebraska is projected to need at least 35,000 new STEM talented individuals to fill jobs in the coming years. As you prepared your projects this year and worked so hard to explain challenging concepts with your peers and the community, you have worked through the process of being a scientist. Today, you get to celebrate those tremendous achievements. Kudos on your hard work preparing for this very important day. Congratulations, scientists. Thank you, Chancellor Lee. Our keynote this year is moderated by Bria Gilmore. Bria is a college junior majoring in communications and a minor in nonprofit management. Five times she advanced from MSCF to the Nebraska Junior Academy of Sciences. Along with her cousin Christina, they represented Nebraska at the American Junior Academy of Sciences, where they toured a science facility, met the AAAS president, and presented their research. Rising on the Omaha Riverfront the past 15 months, the Kiewit Luminarium is scheduled to open in April 2023. Bria recently conversed with Luminarium CEO Silva Raker and Vice President for Partnerships, Sarisha Suwali. Here is part of their conversation. So science to me is the basis of life. It is one innate nature to funnel one's curiosity into a process that to answer questions we can only dream about. Science is is a lifeline. It connects people who do not speak or look like you. It saves lives. It provides meaning, answers questions, and sometimes asks questions for generations to come. Um, my question for you guys is, um, what does science mean to you, and why is it important to introduce science in different forms at an early age? Um, I think you nailed a lot of the key points, Bria. Uh, science is fundamental to everything that we do. It's, it's literally all around us. It's the phenomena that we see and we don't see. Um, but more importantly, uh, I think that there are the hard sciences that address a lot of the questions um, around what it is that we're doing and solving larger community issues or solving larger societal issues. But then there's also equally as important the softer sciences, as often are called, that I do not think are actually soft, uh, but as as important and as foundational as um, traditional sciences. And um, I think it's only when we blend those two together, uh, social sciences with hard science, that we can better understand how we can work together 
to solve larger issues and more complex systems. Um, so I think that science is at the core of everything that we do. And more importantly, it's foundational to solving um, problems around culture, around uh, how we work together and how we move forward as, as a country, as, as a world, as, as a planet. I think a lot of people are intimidated by science, even the word, right? So, um, I'm, and uh, the, probably not anyone on this call, but I'd say really the majority of people, and and yet we're we're swimming in it, right? Like we are these complex cellular organisms, and and we're you know we're living in a uh, a changing climate, and we're we're using all kinds of technology, including these computers we're on today. And, and so it's not other, right? It's actually, it's like we're in it. And so a big part of why it's, why I think informal science or the kind of um, work that we're engaged in, it's about making that science less intimidating and more accessible. And, and, and honestly, a lot of it is just, it's about the disposition. It's about, I, I love what you said, Bria, about, um, asking questions, right? So really the science is kind of a vehicle for people to kind of ask and answer their own questions, right? And then and then also to do that in a social or, or somewhat collective manner in terms of showing results, but also getting another perspective on, on those. The importance of getting really a diverse set of folks, like everyone feeling like this is something they can participate in and enjoy and learn from and be smart and figure things out, you know, that that's more about that kind of dispositional, creating that kind of disposition and, and also our ability to work together. Uh, I, even though we, another thing that you said, is like, we may not look like each other. We may come from really different backgrounds. We may have different comfort levels with the, with the subject. And, and that's not just a nice to have, that's essential. Like we need that. Um, we certainly need it for workforce development, but we also need it. We need the diverse viewpoints and so that we can work together together to solve these problems. So that's part of what I'm really excited about in Omaha is the ability to do that here. How did your career path and upbringing shape the way you define science? Or do you have any specific career points that have shaped that definition in your mind? So for me, science was always really revered in my household, but only the harder sciences. Um, and I knew from a really young age that Hard science was really interesting to me, physics, chemistry, all of that stuff. It, it explained how the world worked. Um, but more important for me was understanding how people thought, how people worked together, how people competed, and the why behind all of those things. Um, so I, I continued to uh, work down this, this pathway of psychology and anthropology and sociology. Those were all really interesting things to me. But um, I think something that you said earlier really uh, it's, drives home with me as well, where my family didn't necessarily think that these softer sciences were as equally valuable as the, the traditional sciences. Um, and I'm so glad that I thought that, um, that opinion in my household, because they are. And I think that really understanding how different cultures have different backgrounds and how, how those different perspectives can work together and challenge one another to get to the ultimate best outcome is what we need to do more of. Um, so that's a little bit of, of why I pursued my pathway into psychology and sociology. Um, and then I transitioned into corporate uh, philanthropy, specifically in STEM education, because I just understood that there was such a, a gap um, in terms of diverse workforce. And I really wanted um, to support programming and nonprofits that were committed to providing fun and accessible ways for, for different groups to approach science. So Frank Oppenheimer was uh, the founder of the Exploratorium in 1969. And at the Exploratorium, when he was thinking of this as like wandering in a woods of natural phenomena, these are you know actual phenomena, like real phenomena, not simulations. And it's about framing up experiences um, you know, light, color, so human phenomena, you name it, in ways that they're really accessible and very open-ended. Like um, they have all these layers of possibility built into them. So my childhood, I actually grew up in a literal woods um, of natural phenomena. So I had, and th that phrase always stuck with me. So I think from a very early, I was, I grew up in the redwoods of Northern California, like on the edge of a redwood forest. And that was where every day we were in those woods. So, and, and I was, 
curious. I was also pretty nerdy and, you know, doing things like mushroom hunting and identifying plants and collecting insects and doing all those kinds of things. But, but so the, I don't know where that came from. And that just felt natural. And I, if you've ever been around young kids, you know, and I've raised a couple, I feel like we're all born with this natural curiosity, right. And it's sort of like, it maybe gets a little bit squashed out of us or gets kind of put into certain kinds of boxes or, or maybe we just don't have as many opportunities. I actually had this vast opportunity. And then I had, um, much like kids, you know, these folks in the science fair, I had some science teachers and some people that really supported me. And, and when, and a really formative experience that I had, which I'm, was that I came to Nebraska when I was 15. It was my first time on an airplane. And I went to national science foundation, kind of a summer program in Lincoln for six weeks. And so in a way that, you know, set me on a path, which, you know, I ended up getting a degree in science and working, as a field biologist, but I, and then for a combination of reasons, partly because I ended up in business. And for me, the business is also like another kind of ecosystem with all these interesting dynamics and another lever for impact in the world. Um, and then migrated into nonprofit and, and to the Exploratorium about 12 years ago. And now, and now here I am back in Nebraska. So I think all the things, all of our experiences through life, you know, have a way of heading us somewhere. We don't always know where that's going to be. In my case, about two years ago, I had no idea that I would be relocating to Omaha, <laughs> but I was working on the project in a very different capacity on the Explore Tram team. And, and so there's something too about um, really honoring all your, all the parts of your experience, including the struggles and, and, and how those make you, you know, cause everything in my childhood was not idyllic. I came from a family that never visited a museum, you know, with the, the, and so for, when I think about being accessible and I think about a rural you know, uh, our, our, an audience, I was the first person in my family to go to college, right? So it's like really thinking deeply about how we all, what, how we bring, what we all bring to this and, and then how do we set it up so that it's, people feel a sense of belonging, you know, no matter what their background is, what their age is, what their gender is, et cetera. Wonderful, both of you. <laughs> I uh, noticed you said something about, um, you had several teachers or and um, mentors in your life that kind of helped you. Um, discover what you wanted to do. Um, I owe a large part of my success um, to an eighth grade teacher I had named Miss Wicker. And she always told me that you can do all the research in the world, but if no one knows why it matters, then what's the point? You know, like we can discover something great, but if nobody knows place, then what's the point? She urged me to make a so what of my project abundantly clear. Why is it important? How does it affect the world around us and the people in it? Um, so now I'm going to kind of ask you, uh, what is the so what or the main goal of a luminarium? <laughs> that advice from your teacher, I've had that same advice from really high level CEOs, right? So that, that applies to everything, you know, like a business meeting, you deciding what to ask in this call, like, you know, what's the, the so what? Like so much times we talk around it. Like what's the, what's the heart of the matter, right? So yeah, I agree. Really great advice. It's great. You're holding that and taking it forward. Um, so one, one way for me to think about that is like, how do we measure, you know, you know, what's the measure of our success, right? So, because we can all wax poetic about it, but at the end of the day, like, what does that look like? Right. And, and I would say a couple things about it for me. One is that it's not my measure. It's actually when we ask people who have had an experience either in the place or out in the community, relate, like what's their measure, right? Are they saying, yeah, this I, I'm think, I, I, I thought I hated this stuff and now, you know, I think it's kind of interesting or, or even families where, you know, like Sarisha was describing, she had some headwinds maybe with what she wanted to study, but sort of all of us kind of getting an enlarged understanding of this stuff together and embracing different pathways and feeling like it, it, having it become incorporated into um, the two identities, right? So that it's not like when we think of scientists, we still, uh, I think people think of guys in white coats, right? I hope that Omaha can be a place and the region really where it, it people uh, start to, that starts to go away. Like people really see a completely different um, when they, and they have so many examples. And, and so, the, and so there's a profound change therefore in the, the way that begins, like the evidence of that for me, thinking scientifically will be a profound shift in demographics in terms of who's actually um, a member, who's visiting, who's um, aware of it. And, and, and that has to start happening before we open our doors because once those identities are set, we're just another irrelevant to some people, 
you know, place downtown that wasn't built for them might be very intimidating and even more so with science. So I think for me, that's, it's going to be measured by the community and by people and, and probably um, most importantly, by people who would be underrepresented, you know, on a national, we have all these stats for demographics and other institutions like this. So looking for not just an incremental change, but an actual sizable shift. How is um, the Luminarium going to ex give a space for open creativity and constructive creativity in a place for just kids to explore and untap their, untap their potential? The Exploratorium, you know, was invented as at the concept of, that Frank Oppenheimer came up with. It's like most museums are don't touch places. He's like, this is a the opposite of that. It's like, touch it. And not only touch it, like try to break it. You know, I mean, hopefully, and it's not like try to break it so much as like try to, you know, whatever it is that you're trying to do is okay. And if, the, if it doesn't, if it breaks something, then, then, then we learn something about that exhibit that we need to, you know, we need to change or, or do better on. So it's, these things are designed for intense engagement, intense interactivity, and there's no, um, it's exactly the opposite of the don't touch, you know, it's kind of the please touch or, but yeah, it's not, you know, come on in and, and don't, yeah, don't worry about scratching anything. It's going to be exactly, I think you're going to, you're going to love it. I can't wait for you to come. <laughs> and I did say it's adults too, right? So, yeah. <laughs> and I think right now we're, we're in a culture ripe with different activities and programs. And I so hope that um, youth of today really take advantage of those, you know, whether it's Cute Luminarium or Girls Inc. or Latino Center of the Midlands. There's so many really rich STEM programs and programs at large that really um, recommend and advocate for you to be hands-on. And as you said, um, that's the best way to learn or one of the one of the great ways to learn. Not, not everyone appreciates that learning and we have to appreciate different types of learners. Um, but I'm really excited for the different programs that will house at the Cute Luminarium and also um, working in close uh, proximity with, with a lot of the community organizations that are doing really great work. So you're absolutely right. I love that you're a STEM advocate because we need more of them and everyone can and should do STEM in some capacity, right? It, whether you're in a softer science or, or what have you, or in fashion or uh, a different discipline at large, everything is connected. You both said that earlier and I think it's so true. And once we understand that, um, we're just going to have a better society and a society that talks to one another. Imagine that. <laughs> I was like, this is going to be amazing. This is going to be so good. <laughs> so I'm so excited to get to talk to you about and get more information and talk to you guys in general. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Congratulations, everyone. Okay. To recognize the work of students, teachers, and supportive parents through the year, we want to recognize the people from area institutions, businesses, and professional organizations who share their time and talents throughout the year to plan for this annual fair and awards ceremony. We also want to thank the three local institutions that provide in-kind support throughout the year as advocates for MSCF as well as the individuals, businesses, and foundations that are major financial contributors to this year's fair. This year, we had 11 local and national organizations, businesses, and universities who donated over $3,000 in cash, memberships, and materials to recognize projects that align with each award sponsor's mission and goals. And of course, uh, none of this could be possible also with the judges who served in judging these projects, we want to thank the people from across the area who served in this role and provided feedback to every student. Thank you. We are now ready for the awards portion of this ceremony. First, we will have the category award winners. Then we will have the special award winners. And then we will have the top six overall projects in each division announced. MSCF encourages all students to engage in STEM practices and concepts in a variety of venues. We are proud of former president of MSCF, Dr. Elizabeth Mulcairn, who is president-elect of the National Science Teaching Association this year. Among the student activities sponsored by NSTA is eCyber Mission. For details about this team competition, visit the eCyber Mission website and see the flyers that will be distributed to MSCF teacher sponsors. 
And now it's time to announce the awardees for this year's fair. I'm going to turn it over to Caitlin Carlson from the University of Nebraska Omaha. Thank you, Dan. As a current council member for the Metropolitan Science and Engineering Fair, I enjoy being able to learn more from each of your projects. As a previous MSEF participant when I was in school, I know firsthand how much time, effort, and research you put into each of your projects. The awards program is in three segments. The category awards, decided by a group of judges who evaluate projects with similar topics and disciplines. The special awards, determined by criteria set by donors who provide special recognition and the Nebraska Junior Academy of Sciences State Fair Qualifiers, decided by a group of judges who evaluate projects across all categories. With these three award segments, it is possible that a project who did not place first in their category may earn more awards than a first place category winner. The category award winners are awarded a plaque and a cash prize. The number of winners per category is determined by the total number of projects entered. We will begin with the Junior Division Category Award winners. The first category is Animal Sciences. In second place, we have Thomas. In first place, we have Sadie. Congratulations! Next is Behavioral Science cognitive psychology. In third place, we have Anissa. In second, Norian. In first place, we have Aaliyah and Mackenzie. Congratulations. Next is the behavioral science neuroscience category. In fourth place, we have Reese and Eli. In third place, we have Ezra. In second place, Zarina. And in first place, we have Ashmisa. Congratulations. Biomedical and Health Sciences. In fourth place, we have Velina. In third place, we have Amina. In second place is Faith. And in first place, we have Pranavi. Congratulations to you all. Next up is Chemistry Properties. In third place is Lexi. In second place is Roslyn. And in first place is Blake. Congratulations. Next up is the Chemistry Reactions category. In this category for second place we have Shane. In first place, we have Catherine. Congratulations. Earth and Environmental Sciences. In third place, we have Topeka. In second place, Lily. And in first place, Isha. Congratulations to you. Next up is the Engineering Technology category. In third place, we have Jack and Ella. Second place is Austin and Preston. In first place is Olivia. Congratulations to all of you. Food Sciences. In second place is Audrey. In first place is Benjamin. Congratulations. Next, we have the material science category. In fourth place, we have Carson and Cassidy. In third, Jonathan. In second, Aishu. And in first, Margot. Congratulations. Next is mathematics. And in first place, we have David. Congratulations to you. Next, in microbiology. In second place is Caitlin. In first place is Partha. Congratulations to you. Physics, mechanics. 
In second place is Anthony. In first place is Landon. Congratulations. Next is physics propulsion. In second place, we have Tamlin. And in first place, we have Nick. Congratulations. Next is physics speed. In third place, we have Claire. In second place, Maxwell. And in first place, Catherine. Congratulations. Next is physics waves. We have in second place, David. And in first place, Carlos. Congratulations to you. Next up is plant sciences agronomy. In second place, we have Harrison. And in first place, Angelina. Congratulations. Next up in plant sciences growth and development, in second place, we have Kalisa. And in first place, David. Congratulations. Systems, software, and robotics. In first place, we have Charlie. Congratulations. Next is water science. In second place, we have Isabella. And in first place, we have Zariah. Congratulations. Next up, we have the Senior Division Category Award winners. The first category is Animal and Behavioral Sciences. In fourth place, we have Sinea. Third place, Haley. Second place, Lauren. And in first place, we have Ella. Congratulations. Next is Biomedical Sciences. In second place, Siri. In first place, Mercedes. Congratulations. Next is the Cellular Molecular Biology. In third place, we have Annabelle. In second place, Aaron. And in first, Anjana. Congratulations to each of you. Next is Earth and Environmental Sciences. In first place, we have Alex. Congratulations. Next for microbiology, in third place, we have Jace. Second, Sasha. And in first, Arihant. Congratulations. That sums up to all of our category award winners. Congratulations to all of you for all of your hard work and for winning in each of your categories. We will now begin the special awards, which are judged according to guidelines set by the donors. 13 local and national organizations, businesses, and universities donated over $3,000 in cash, memberships, and materials to recognize projects that align with each award sponsor's mission and goals. The University of Nebraska STEM Trail Center is awarding two individuals the STEMtastic Award. Congratulations to Olivia and Zariah from Omaha Virtual School, who will each receive a Nebraska STEM activity book. The Society of Women Engineers has awarded four individual projects a cash award for Outstanding Female Engineering Project. In first place, we have Olivia from Omaha Virtual School. In second place, we have Isha from Elkhorn Valley View Middle School. And in a tie for third place, we have Anna from Alice Buffett Magnet and Tamlin from the Omaha Virtual School. Congratulations. Next, we have the Omaha North Magnet School Special Award for a Health Science Project, which goes to Linden at Beverage Magnet Middle School, who will receive a medal in North Gear. 
Next, we have the Omaha North Student Ambassadors Special Award for an engineering project, which will go to Jack and Ella from Alice Buffett Magnet Middle School. Congratulations. The American Chemical Society has awarded two individuals from both the junior division and the senior division the Excellence in Chemistry Award. These winners will receive a cash prize and a beaker mug. For the junior division, in first place, we have Catherine from Bryan Middle School. And in second place, we have Rosalyn from Gerald Ott Blair Middle School. For the senior division, in first place, we have Annabelle from UNMC High School Alliance. And in second place, we have Ajanu, also from UNMC's High School Alliance. The Green Omaha Coalition has awarded two junior and two senior projects the Sustainability Award. These winners each will receive a cash award plus $100 for their school. For the junior division, in no particular order, is Lucille and Jenna from Gerald Ott Blair Middle School and Caitlin from McMillan Magnet Center. For the senior division, in no particular order, is Haley from Zoo Academy and Lauren from Omaha North High. Congratulations. Seven individuals have been awarded the Office of Naval Research Naval Science Award. Three individual projects will receive a gift card and a medal, and they follow in no particular order. Erin from UNMC High School Alliance, Siri from Brownell Talbot School, Haley from Zoo Academy. Four other individuals will, will receive a medal for their projects, and in no particular order, Anna from Alice Buffett Magnet Middle School, Aishu from Elkhorn Valley View Middle School, Jonas from King Science and Tech Magnet, and Margot from Alice Buffett Magnet Middle School. Congratulations to all of you. Luritz and Gardens has awarded a family membership for the Luritz and Gardens Plant Science Project Award. Congratulations to Angela from McMillan Magnet Center. The Greater Omaha Chapter of AFCEA has awarded 10 projects a cash award and showcase at their luncheon. Congratulations to the following in no specific order, Olivia from Omaha Virtual School, Landon from Beverage Magnet Middle School, Maxwell from McMillan Magnet Center, Tamlin from Omaha Virtual School, Thomas from St. Cecilia Cathedral School, Charlie from Gerald Ott Blair Middle School, Jonas from King Science and Tech Magnet, Ella from Zoo Academy, Hannah from Zoo Academy, and Siri from Brownell Talbot School. The Aerospace Futures Alliance has awarded two projects the Aerospace Award. Each individual will receive a cash award. Congratulations to Isha from Elkhorn Valley View Middle School and Alex from Zoo Academy. Midwest Laboratories has awarded six projects a cash award. Maoji Anu from King Science and Tech Magnet, Emma from Great Thinkers Learning Academy, Mercedes from Burke High School, Elena from UNMC High School Alliance, Caden from UNMC High School Alliance, and Jace from Omaha Central High School. Congratulations. Mastery Logistics Systems, Inc. has awarded a cash award to one junior and one senior division project. For the junior division, we have Olivia from Omaha Virtual School, and for the senior division, we have Montana from Zoo Academy. Congratulations. The South Dakota Mines University has awarded a $1,000 scholarship to an individual project. 
Congratulations to Arhant from Millard North High School. This wraps up the end of the special awards. Congratulations to all of our special award winners. Few of us would be here today without the enthusiasm, encouragement, and dedication of your teachers who told you about the Metro Science and Engineering Fair. Michelle Ricard, who sponsored around 20 projects completed by her students each year during her teaching career, passed away suddenly in November 2017. To honor her memory, today we recognize a sponsor who, like Michelle, has demonstrated enthusiasm, encouragement, and dedication to her students' science research and MSEF participation. This year, the MSEF is proud to present a plaque sponsored by Regal Awards and a cash prize sponsored by Midwest Labs to Kimberly Wickert from Alice Buffett Magnet Middle School. Congratulations! Congratulations, Ms. Wicker. The final special award is the Dow Award, named after David Dow, the founder of MSEF. This recognizes a top project that will serve as the alternate to compete should one of our top six projects not attend the Nebraska Junior Academy of Sciences State Fair next month. Receiving a trophy and cash prize, the Dow Award of Merit goes to Sadie from McMillan Magnet Center and receiving the Dow Award for Excellence in the Senior Division, Lauren from Omaha North High. Finally, we will announce the six projects that have been recommended to participate in the Nebraska Junior Academy of Sciences State Fair next month in Lincoln against projects from the other five regions in the state. First, from the junior division, in no particular order, Pranavi from Millard North Middle School, Lily from McMillan Magnet Center, Ashwarya from Elkhorn Valley View Middle School, Olivia from Omaha Virtual School, Isabella from King Science and Tech Magnet, and Zariah from Omaha Virtual School. And now the senior division projects advancing on to the NJAS in no particular order. Ella from Zoo Academy, Haley from Zoo Academy, Anaja from UNMC High School Alliance, Annabelle from UNMC High School Alliance, Alex from Zoo Academy, and Erin from UNMC High School Alliance. Congratulations to each of you. This concludes the 43rd Annual Metropolitan Science and Engineering Fair. Congratulations to all of our participants this year. We encourage you to continue on with your science endeavors and hope to see you again in the future.